Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service this morning. It's so good to have you with us. Today is Transfiguration Sunday and during our service today we're going to be thinking about the importance of spending time with Jesus. But we're going to remember too that our calling isn't simply to stay with him. It's to come from the mountaintop into the valley to be his hands and feet, to work alongside people who may otherwise be very different to us. And I know that's a hard calling and it can sometimes be really tough. But as the collect reminds us today, in our sufferings, we become more like Jesus, changed in his likeness, becoming people who are transformed from glory into glory. And that's our prayer for us today. Remember that during the week we begin our journey into um, uh, Lent and towards Easter. Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday and we begin our uh, journey uh, through the Lent course with our friends in other parishes across the ministry area. We're going to be looking at the Bible course, which is a great course. There'll be some interactive elements. We'll get to watch a video together. But we'll also get to uh, enter into group discussion and to pray together. Uh, this course gives us an overview of the Bible, looking at the big picture of the Bible, the story, which is our story. So today is probably your last chance to sign up. If you haven't done that yet, please consider signing up. You can do it on our website. And as I said, you'll be joining more than 40 people who've already signed up from the various parishes in our ministry area to journey through that Bible course through Lent towards Holy Week and Easter. Wednesday is also Ash Wednesday. It's Ash Wednesday with a difference this year. And what we're going to be doing is offering evening prayer on Zoom. So if you'd like to join us for that, then please do, do look out for the link in our weekly email. I hope that you'll be blessed and encouraged as you join us to pray. Let's begin our service with a collect for today, the prayer for Transfiguration Sunday. Almighty Father, whose Son, Jesus, was revealed in majesty before he suffered death on the cross. Give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory into glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So let's worship together.
The reading today is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. He was so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son who I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anybody with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. speak and may you hear in the name of God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well today we once again continue our pilgrimage through the church calendar. Today is the Feast of Transfiguration. But I think before we deal with the matters for today in today's reading it's worth just having a bit of a pit stop thinking about where we've journeyed so far. We celebrated the birth of Jesus at Christmas And since then, there have been significant markers along the way to help us identify the identity of Jesus. Think about them. First of all, we have the testimony of the wise men, their gold, their frankincense and myrrh. Then later, we have the baptism of Jesus, that great revelation in the River Jordan. Afterwards, we had the wedding at Cana, Jesus' first miracle, turning water into wine. And then more recently, the incredible events in the temple with Simeon and Anna. All of them encourage us to think about the identity of Jesus, to recognise, to see, to know that Jesus is more than a mere mortal. He is Emmanuel, God with us. His life, his ministry is remarkable. 
We're supposed to take note of the identity of Jesus and to think about what it means for us to follow him. Well, today we meet with Jesus and three of his disciples, with Peter, with James and John, and Jesus leads them to a mountain top. Now, in the middle of this world and all its troubles, I just want to ponder for a moment what that must have been like. An opportunity for the disciples to step away from the busy rush of doing the work of being disciples and just spending some intimate time with Jesus on a mountain top. How amazing it must have been to be there with Jesus. And life now, just like life in those first century times, can be really challenging not least in the middle of a pandemic and having to deal with coronavirus. I bet that you, like me, are simply fed up of turning on the news and hearing about all the challenges relating to infection, to virus and a rising death rate. So I want to encourage you, in the middle of all these troubles, just to find some time to retreat and to be with Jesus, to enter into his presence, to have that intimate quiet, personal time with him, just like Peter, James and John did on the mountainside. Spending time with Jesus is a crucial part of our spiritual growth and it's certainly something that I've benefited from on my own journey along the, along the years. Every day I try to step aside from whatever is going on and spend time, just me and Jesus. It's a time for me to celebrate God's goodness. It's a time for me to thank Jesus for his goodness, his faithfulness, his love. It's a time for me to be honest with Jesus, to cry out to Jesus, to share my concerns, my anxieties, my sorrows and my pains. It's a time for me to connect with Jesus, to remember that in the middle of all of that, he is with me no matter what. He promises never to abandon or to forsake me. And it's a time to refresh, to renew my hope, to come to the Bible for spiritual food, to find the strength to look forward to another day, to all its joys and all its sorrows. And I want to commend that spiritual practice to you. Just like Peter and James and John, find a time to step away, to be with Jesus, to enter into his presence, just you and him. It'll set you up for the day. It'll help you to grow as a Christian and it'll change your perspective on life. Just you and Jesus. And if you like, I'd encourage you to go to our website where you'll find a section on prayer. And on that page, there's some practical guidelines that'll help you to begin to form that spiritual discipline of spending some quiet time with Jesus. I know life is busy. I know that life can sometimes be a struggle. So you don't need to spend hours or days with him. Just a few moments every single day. See what difference that makes. I'd encourage you to begin today. Peter, James and John, they did just that. They stepped away from the busy rush of discipleship, from the work of following Jesus and doing his business. And on that mountainside, they spent time with him. I bet they didn't imagine what happened next. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is transfigured. He's transformed. He becomes dazzling white. His clothes, they're whiter than any earthly bleach could ever have accomplished. He looks divine, incredible. And then suddenly appearing with him in this extraordinary dazzling state is Elijah and Moses. These scenes, they're extraordinary. We're meant to stop. We're meant to think once and twice, even three times about what's going on. Because the, the gospel writer Mark is encouraging us to see that there is something extraordinary 
about the identity of Jesus. He's not just a mere mortal. He's more than a good teacher or a prophet. He is, of course, Emmanuel, God with us. In other words, the Gospel writer is wanting us to see that if we want to really recognise and know God, then we have to look at Jesus. If we want to appreciate the depths of God's love for us, then we look at Jesus. The events of the Transfiguration are remarkable. And they're even more remarkable because of the presence of Elijah and Moses. Elijah, of course, was one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. And Moses, well, he was the father of the law. So here, alongside Jesus, on the mountaintop, are the law and the prophets. And they enter into dialogue, conversation with Jesus. It's incredible. It's as if Mark is wanting us to see that the fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies and Moses' laws are found here in the person of Jesus. The prophecies of the Old Testament, well, they pointed us to Jesus. And Mark and his Gospel and all the letters of the New Testament, they're evidence of how those prophecies are fulfilled in Jesus. Moses' law, again, that's fulfilled in Jesus. He is Emmanuel, God with us. These incredible, incredible verses are written to encourage us to see and to know and to understand that we are loved so much by God that he comes down into the complexity of our human story and he is with us. And in the middle of a really challenging time, isn't that an incredible thing? Isn't that an amazing thing to ponder a reality that we need to hold on to? That we are loved, that we are loved so much that God comes among us in Jesus. He identifies with our joys, with our sorrows, with our anxieties, with our pains. He knows all of those things for himself and he is with us. That reality, it brings to me a sense of strength, of encouragement and hope, no matter what I face in the middle of life's struggles. And you know, as the, the passage goes on, one of the disciples, bless him, he is so overcome, he finds himself on a spiritual high. He doesn't want to retreat from this place. He wants to stay there forever. Lord, it's really good to be here. Shall I build a tabernacle for uh, each of you? One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, and we can stay here forever. And I think that that's really tempting for us as Christians too, isn't it? When we retreat, when we spend time with Jesus, we find strength and encouragement and blessing. And we want to stay there forever. Perhaps some of you can identify with me when I reflect on the experience of going to large Christian conferences where I'm built up and encouraged in my faith, where I've experienced and known the presence of Jesus. Those opportunities have changed my perspective. They've sometimes even blown my mind. And I've wanted to stay there forever. I've wanted to be on the mountaintop with Jesus. Somehow, nothing else mattered. That was the place for me. That was the place I needed to be. And I know for lots of us, this period in lockdown, it has been an opportunity to embrace a slower pace of life. It's been an opportunity to set aside lots of things that might otherwise have consumed our time. It's given us a chance to be with Jesus. It's given us a chance to pray more, to read our Bibles more, to listen to encouraging uh, Christian speakers who've blessed our faith and encouraged us and built us up. 
And perhaps we might be in a place where we're really on fire for Jesus. We really sense his presence with us and we want to stay there. Perhaps we even are bemused by the fact that others around us are not in that place. Those times are really important. They're really good. They're times that I've experienced along the way in my own Christian journey. And there have been times like you, I'm sure, where I've wanted to stay there on the mountain top, to be with Jesus. Lord, it's good to be here. Can I build a tabernacle and stay here with you forever? But Jesus says, no. No, it's good to be here. But the real work isn't on the mountain top. It's down in the valley. That's where the real work is. And it's hard, yes. But that's where we need to be as Christians. Alongside those who are struggling, with those who are hurting, we labour even alongside our fellow disciples who are completely unlike us. People who perhaps don't see things in the same way as us. It's hard, it's difficult, but that's where we're called to be. And you know, that's the incredible thing about the church, that we're a motley crew of misfits. People who might otherwise have had nothing in common with one another. People of different ages and stages and backgrounds. People whose worldview is profoundly different. People who see things in a different way. But we're bound together by our common love for Jesus. We're brothers and sisters in him. And no matter how different we are, we have this great thing in common. We're a family. And that's what's incredible to me about the church. Every Sunday morning, when I get together with people who are profoundly different to me, in our common purpose, in our endeavour to love Jesus more and to love people as he loved us, we're a family. And Jesus says, it's good to be on the mountain top, but we need to be down in the valley. We need to be labouring together. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And some of us, as we've experienced those spiritual highs in lockdown, those uh, extended times with Jesus, in prayer, in reading our Bible, as we've been encouraged and built up by some in inspirational Christian speakers. We might want to say, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let us be here forever. But today Jesus says to us, yes, it's good to be here. But the real work is not on the mountain top. It's down in the valley. And you might be hearing this word thinking, that's hard. It's hard to go from the mountain top into the valley and to labour for Jesus alongside people who are profoundly different, with people who don't see things in the same way as me. How can I do that? It's going to be a challenge, a struggle. And yet Jesus says, this is truly our calling. This is what we must do. And I think that's why the events of the Transfiguration are so amazing and so encouraging as we ponder that challenge to go from the mountain top down to the valley. Because later Jesus would ascend into heaven. Later, Jesus would go and be with his Father. He would sit on his throne in the heavenly places. And the incredible thing about that is, it means that Jesus is no longer with one group of people in one geographical location at one particular point in time. It means that Jesus is with everyone. Every place, every time, he is with us. And all we need to do is call on the name of Jesus 
And we know that in the power of his spirit, he is with us, alongside us as we labour. So we don't labour alone, we labour in his strength, in his power. It's his spirit that binds us together. It's his spirit that makes that motley crew of misfits, people from different ages and stages and backgrounds, a church, a force to be reckoned with as we labour in his strength, in his power and in his name. Yes, it's really good to be with Jesus. Yes, it's vital for our own individual spiritual growth and our spiritual growth as a church that we have those times with Jesus, both on our own and together as a church family. It's really good to be on the mountain top with Jesus. We need those times to be refreshed, to be encouraged, to be built up. And if we haven't been having those times, then perhaps we need to use today as a, an opportunity to heed the challenge, to spend more time with Jesus. But on the other hand, we need to remember too that the passage today encourages us to remember that our calling isn't simply to stay there on that spiritual high. It's a difficult calling. It's a calling to tread the narrow path, to go down from the mountain top into the valley and to labour with others in the name of Jesus, to be his hands and his feet, to make him known in those difficult endeavours as we choose to love one another and to love others as he loved us. Amen. Prayer for Transfiguration Sunday. God in heaven, your glory shines through. Jesus, your son, gave me a heart which shines with Jesus' love, so that people can see you at work through me, and so may be drawn closer to you. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So let us pray. Help us to quieten our minds and open our hearts so that we may pray and hear your word without distraction. As with Christians throughout the world, let us join together to offer our prayers with love in our hearts and thanksgiving to what you have granted to us. Today in the Anglican Church, we are asked to pray for the Anglican Church in Canada, for the current primate, Linda Nichols. We pray for all her work she has with the clergy and the laity, and praying at this time for all their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer for Archbishop John, for his family, and for all under his care. We pray for Adrian, for Andrew, and for Elizabeth, and for all their families. We pray also for the lay worship team, and for all who work for the good of our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer our prayers for the charity A. Russia UK and the Eco Church Programme. This is a Christian conservation project working with churches, communities and individuals by encouraging them to help our world be a cleaner and safer place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, whose faithfulness knows no end, we pray for our Queen and her government and for all who guide the affairs of our nation. Fill them with the fear of your holy name that they may be set free from the fear of man. Guide them in every situation to help them know to do the right thing and that they may have the strength to overrule any deliberations that would be harmful to our people. Hear this pe prayer through Jesus his name, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commend into your loving care and protection all those whose work is dangerous and compromised, for those who risk their lives caring for others. We thank you for their devotion to their work at this time of uncertainty. We pray for all key workers, doctors, nurses, health board staff, paramedics, firefighters, police, shop workers, bus drivers and carers, and all delivery staff. We pray that, we may, that they may know you are beside them, upholding them every minute of every hour of every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have taught us that you are, we are members of our community, that we help one another in good times and in bad. We thank you for that community spirit, for those helping people who are shielding, and for activities and interests that we can share in good times. Help us to make our contributions and learn to be good neighbours that they, by their love, may serve one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer for all those suffering sickness in body, mind or spirit. Due to this extraordinary time, we are like, we are lives, sorry, due to this extraordinary time due to the pandemic. For those in hospital at this time, for those on the ICU wards, and those fighting for their lives, and those on a long road to recovery. We pray for those who are close to death. Grant them courage and peace in their hearts, and do for them whatever is in their good. 
Our prayers go out to families who are suffering so also. Grant them also courage and strength in their time of anguish, but in the knowledge of your love which is surrounding them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, receive all those who have passed from this earthly life into your eternal kingdom. Grant them rest and peace, free of pain and suffering, into your perfect kingdom. We also pray for families grieving the loss of a loved one. Grant them peace, also in the knowledge that they are at peace and resting safely in God's loving arms. And we pray for all those remembering a loved one and whose anniversary falls at this time. You're a God full of love and compassion. Shine your light upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all our joy and longing you have given us in our beautiful land. You have granted us the necessity of life. We thank you for the gift of hope and for the promise you have given to us in our, to our eternal life. Help us to carry on your work, helping others and praising your holy name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Well, bless you for joining us today again. Uh, remember that this service is going to be available online throughout the week. So if others in your family haven't been able to join us today, then they can do so at their convenience any day and any time that works for them. It's been great to have you with us today. Remember, as we finish our service, that we're always here to help and support you throughout the week, whether that be spiritually or practically. We're still shopping for people. We're still meeting online for our various meetings every day of the week. And we're still partnering people on the telephone to turn isolation into connection. One of our wardens, Rob Samuel, is coordinating a team of callers. And if you haven't been getting a call and you'd like one, please do get in touch with Rob and we can arrange that for you. But as another week begins, let me pray for God's blessing on you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.